Hi, Wolfpack fans. I'm Jeff Gravel. I'm Tony Haynes. We're beginning a new era on the Wolfpack Sports Network. Welcome, Chaz. Matt Chaz now. will do it. Final score here in Death Valley, it is 59 to 35. Dejected Coach Dorn and I thought it was interesting that he's, he's really looking on the film for effort. He's going to try to deduce who is max effort as they move forward here from this ballgame. You know, frustrating uh, performance to say the least and not much you can say um, when you're outplayed and outcoached the way that we were and um, as I said after the game, you know, I take Everything that happens on that football field personally, and I feel the same frustration that I know a lot of our fans do and our players do. And when you watch the film, uh, there's several guys that are playing really hard and there's several guys that aren't. You said something on Monday during your presser that really struck me because uh, I've seen all of your pressers. I've done a million of these shows with you over this 12 year period, but you said, we had several guys that play hard. We had several guys who did not. Yeah. Did that hurt your soul having to say yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, it is, and it's the truth. And, and transparency is what's required. And I'm not making excuses for, for myself. I'm not making excuses for our players. We need to play harder. And as coaches, we need to put guys in the game that will play harder. And that's where we're at, and the kids know that. You know, this isn't tryouts anymore. Like, what you've put on film is your resume. I'm not saying you can't earn it back. Guys can earn it back, and you'll see some differences. And it's a competition right now, so I couldn't even tell you who we're starting yet. But when we get through the end of the week, I'll be able to tell you, and then we'll see how guys battle back. I mean, that's what this life is all about. You know, guys in this program, we love these kids, you know. I mean, I'm not giving up on any of them, but I expect more from them, and uh, they know that, and I'm hoping they'll deliver that for us. Is that as high a compliment as there is in this sport? Like, is that the, the attribute that you go, of all things, I want a tough kid, a tough team, a tough football? Yeah, I mean, it is for me. I mean, I can't speak for other head coaches, but, you know, you wouldn't say that about us watching last week. And, and so that's what hurts my soul, you know what I mean? Like, I understand why people are upset because that's not our football team, uh, at least not one I've coached in the past looked like that. And so we got a lot of mending to do, a lot of making up to do. What do we have going this week? A lot. Hoops practice is underway for both the men and the women, both basking in the afterglow of Final Four appearances last spring. So we'll talk a little bit about that. ACC rivals come together for the ACC Unity Tour. And NC State football still trying to put things together, getting ready for the start of a three-game homestand at Carter-Finley Stadium, along with Matt Chaz and now the voice of the Wolfpack. I'm Tony Haynes, and I, I say put things together. Fortunately for NC State, Dave Dorn and his staff have a tremendous track record as uh, people who can fix things, who can find solutions to problems. You go back to last season, coming out of an open date, the Pack looked lost, four and three, scored only three points and a loss to Duke, and then they, they fixed some of their problems and did so dramatically, won five games in a row and uh, went on to the bowl game and had a successful season with nine wins. So you got to have faith that this – this group of coaches, they can figure things out. That was my first thought. I mean, I've I'm, I'm been here six seconds, right? And so if I was to go back seven seconds, getting here, the reputation of the program was five straight wins after a really tough loss and then a bye week, right? And, and a reconfiguration and not good success, great success, right? And when it felt really hard. And on paper, I know that was a very hard part of the schedule, right? And I, and I don't think it's a direct parallel. It's new personnel. It's it's new the portal and all that that is, but the track record you alluded to is spot on. I mean, that that's that's what is, in terms of recency bias, that's exactly what you look at. Yeah, and, uh, you know, last year all changes are, are different, right? The last season they went in the open date and they made some tweaks on offense. I think the two things, the major uh, changes they made, well, one, they started huddling, and, which is unusual in this day and age in college football. They had been a no-huddle team. They decided to slow the process down increased communication in the in the huddle for their quarterbacks that seemed to work and they also prioritized getting the ball in the hands of their best player a, a true freshman at that time KC Concepcion um, this year it sounds like uh, the changes may be personnel related right might see some different guys on the field in upcoming games during that three game 
a winning streak. But you gotta you you gotta do what's necessary to put players in a position to help you win. And so there may be some uh, some different starters out there for NC State uh, against Northern Illinois coming out on Saturday. And uh, it's like Coach Dorn, he didn't mince any words when I interviewed him after the Clemson game. I said, what are you going to look for in the film? And he said, I'm going to try to find the guys who want to play hard. And it really hurts him to have to say what he did on uh, Monday during his press conference. He said that uh, we had several guys that played hard. We had several guys who didn't. And I think during his 12 years here at NC State, I can't remember him ever questioning the effort of some players. So it really hurts him to have to say that. But if you don't play hard for, for this guy and this staff, uh, somebody else is waiting in the wings to take your spot. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Coca-Cola. Crisp, refreshing, and irresistibly tasty. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Try and decide. It's truck month at your Carolina Ford dealers. Get great offers on a large selection of Ford F-150 trucks with available smart tech like Ford Blue Cruise, the hands-free highway driver assist feature named Consumer Reports top rated active driving assistance system two years in a row. Tough this smart can only be found here during Ford Truck Month. Get up to $10,250 in total savings plus three years of Ford Blue Cruise on a 2024 Ford F-150 XLT hybrid. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. CPI. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now. This segment of Pulse of the Pack is presented by Coca-Cola. Earlier this week, there was a press conference somewhere of, of the many football games that were played. Guys were talking about signals and complex signals, and, and sometimes things can get in the weeds. Sometimes things are simple. Fill gaps, wrap up, right? Sometimes it's that simple. I think that was what we kind of heard from Coach Gibson. That's another thing that might, that might pop up here is, is there is a – a really healthy, let's get back to basic sense. Yeah, run fits part of the problem in that game against Clemson when you're giving up those big running plays. That's correctable. Mm -hmm. you got to get guys in the right place. But, you know, part of the success they've had on defense is uh, all 11 players completely understood their role. And I think we're kind of in a different place here now at NC State. If you look back, like, to last year's defense, where it was a uh, Shy Battle at corner, uh, Devin Boykin, Peyton Wilson, Savion Jackson, uh, other players. All of those guys have played only one defense in their career. And they knew the Tony Gibson system like the back of their hand. These new guys, and Coach Doran pointed out uh, just a few weeks ago, you know, the chemistry building process on the field has been slower than the chemistry building process off the field. Yeah, these guys are really getting along great in some ways, but you've still got to figure out, mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned at one point, like blocking chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I had asked him about QB receiver chemistry, mm -hmm. and that's such an obvious one. A new QB comes in, guys get fed the ball, mm -hmm. right? Like, wait a minute, that guy wasn't receiving yeah. as many passes. Yeah. And I think in some instances, it's, it's statistically hidden. Mm -hmm. It's blocking, mm -hmm. not a lot of stats for that. So, old home week for uh, Dave Dorn going mm -hmm. up against Northern Illinois. That's where he got his first shot mm -hmm. as a head coach. He had been the uh, defensive coordinator at Wisconsin uh, uh, up until 2010. Then he got the opportunity to 
take over the Northern Illinois program. They had tremendous success. He was there just two years. Many of you listening now know that Dave Dorn, his first head coaching opportunity before coming to NC State was at Northern Illinois. It was a great experience. He won two conference championships, became a hot coaching commodity. But would I be correct if I say right now, Dave, you're not feeling overly sentimental? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I have great memories of my time there, um, <clears throat> not just in uh, the wins, but relationships with the players, uh, lessons learned as a you know new head coach. Uh, people in the town that I became friends with, um, and all that's, you know, memories. You know, over the years, we've talked a lot about your coaching journey. And uh, back then, you were the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin, and you'd had some success. And at a school like that, if you have success, you're going to get some head coaching opportunities. When Northern Illinois called, was it a no-brainer at that time? To go to Northern? Yeah. Uh, no, really? it wasn't. Um, I had interviewed for several other jobs, and, and – to be honest, I was kind of like, I'm not going to get a head job. You know, I, I interviewed at Indiana, was the runner-up. Inter interviewed at Vanderbilt, was the runner-up. <clears throat> interviewed somewhere else. Um, and we were getting ready to play the Rose Bowl, and I was kind of like, man, I'm done with this. And uh, they called, asked if I could come to Chicago, and they were interviewing 12 people, and I really didn't want to go. <laughs> you know, I was kind of like, I just want to get ready for the Rose Bowl. And if something told me to go do it. <laughs> And I interviewed, and uh, obviously it went well. <clears throat> and then they asked me to come back, and at that time Sarah was kind of done with it. You know, she's like, I don't want to go. And I'm like, we have to go. Like, wow. we have to go. And they had a blizzard that day, and, and it's a true story. We were snowed in. I pulled out of the driveway. I had a suit on. I was supposed to go meet the chancellor, and our, our uh, minivan got stuck in no. the driveway. Oh, man. And I'm out there shoveling, trying to get us out. And this guy comes by. One of my friends was blading. He had a blade on his pickup, was scooping up snow. Uh, and I asked him if he could drag us out. And he did. And yeah. we drove down there. It's supposed to only take about two hours. And it was a blizzard, you know. Sarah's crying. The kids were crying in the back because they thought we were going to die on the highway. <laughs> and the whole point was we wanted to see DeKalb before I mm -hmm. said yes. I'm like, I'm not moving from a great place. Madison's a really good town. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter. I mean, it was terrible. Like snow sideways, <laughs> cars are all off the, off the road, you know. And so, yeah, I ended up taking that job. And <laughs> Sarah deserves a lot of uh, kudos for letting me do that because so, it was a tough one. Uh, how long was it before she talked to you again? Yeah, it was. You know, we ended up having a family meeting down there. <laughs> she she forgave me eventually, and uh, obviously, I'm thankful. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. CPI. Truck Month at your Carolina Ford dealers. Get great offers on a large selection of Ford F-150 trucks with available smart tech like Ford Blue Cruise, the hands-free highway driver assist feature named Consumer Reports top rated active driving assistance system two years in a row. Tough this smart can only be found here during Ford Truck Month. Get up to $10,250 in total savings plus three years of Ford Blue Cruise on a 2024 Ford F-150 XLT hybrid. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now.
Well, let's switch gears a little bit. The ACC takes a lot of pride in its institutions, the success that we've seen in the Atlantic Coast Conference over the years in all sports. Uh, clearly, I think, maybe the most successful conference if you, if you size it up from not only football, basketball, but all of the major sports. The athletes, uh, you know, they perform with a chip on their shoulder. There's a lot of competition. There are a lot of rivalries. And uh, these athletes get on the playing field or on the court. They want to win. And they want to beat uh, the other teams that they go up against in the ACC. But there's also a sense uh, occasionally, especially you get into the offseason, um, there's, a, there's a unity there between these athletes. And in fact, it shows up in what is known as the ACC Unity Tour. It's, a now, it's an annual event where uh, student athletes from every school in the Atlantic Coast Conference uh, get together and they'll travel to uh, different cities for what is kind of build an educational tour uh, and this year, uh, they showed up in Charleston, South Carolina. Not a bad place to be. No, it's beautiful there. And you want to talk about a rivalry that also has some communal aspects off the field. you got mm -hmm. newcomers to the league. But really, the best of this is off the field community building. And I mean that, you know, you're going to go there in the Carter Finley on Saturday and you're going to wear red and white and you're going to cheer for the pack. And then, um, you know, in a healthy situation, you know, I think you've got Cal and Stanford players off the field mm -hmm. coming together in Charleston, South Carolina, and going, look, this, this is bigger than just sport and competition in whatever arena you might be. And we're at the ACC Unity Tour. For the past three yeah, years, the ACC has and held a Unity Cal's Tour, right. inviting each school to visit historic and impactful places. This summer, Charleston, South Carolina was the destination. Hi, Say hi to our friends, our new friends. Say hi. Representing NC State were student athletes Kayla Feckel, Lacey Steele, Quentin Clark, Sean Hill, athletic trainer Brittany Blunt, and athletic administrator Stephanie Minio and Raymond Harrison. What I think about that trip, it allowed us, who sometimes we're doing all the teaching, it allows us to be co-learners with them. I'm not gonna lie, today's been a good day, man. I got to hang out with my family. There's joy in, in seeing those, those students come together, um, get exposed to, to information, sometimes for the first time, and, and to see how they grow through the discomfort. There's discomfort, really deep truths, really powerful information that they have a chance to experience. This year's theme was Journey of Resilience, cultivating history through community, culture, and cuisine. The group tour included the International African American Museum. I can read all I want, but I'm actually a visual learner, so being there and able to witness just the history, you feel it as soon as the bus parked outside, like you felt it. Another impactful visit was to the Mother Emanuel AME Church, the oldest black church in the South. We call it the Church, church of Resilience, just because, I mean, it had been through so much over the years it's been destroyed and been built back up. Um, there have been people that have been forced to leave just because of the way they look. It just made you kind of feel really proud and really like encouraged to see that this build, building is still standing. This, these people are still encouraged and hopeful and being able to tell the story is just a testament of power and resilience in itself. So it was very powerful to be able to experience that. This is also the site of the 2015 mass shooting where nine churchgoers were killed during Bible study, something read about by many, but felt by the group in the sacred space. Hearing how they rebuilt and how the church really helped everyone come together, like after that tragedy, the next Sunday they were still at church and you know, the families and everything, they, they mentioned the nine that were lost all the time. They never forget those nine. able to like sit in that moment to hear such a beautiful hymn like it was breathtaking honestly and it I mean a pin could have dropped outside of the organ playing I mean literally everybody was just locked in and listening to this music. Each attendee had their own memorable moment for Sean Hill and Raymond Harrison it was their visit to a slave plantation site where some of the small slave living quarters are still standing. Very powerful for me um, I had a moment. I, I absolutely had a moment. Yeah, it really hit me. Uh, hit me hard. Um, just looking 
at the plantation itself, looking at where the slaves lived at, what they had to work on. Like we actually saw uh, the cotton, the plant itself, you know, growing. They had a little bit of it growing there to show us and telling us they had to pick 100 pounds a day. You know, with something so light, you had to pick 100 pounds per, per slave, per adult slave, which is crazy to me. It was a trip rich in knowledge, experience, and cuisine. Plenty of good old Charleston food. That's my plate right now. Got a good plate. A more hands-on adventure was on the dock, going crabbing, most for the very first time. I'm from Oklahoma, so we definitely don't have anywhere to crab out there. Go, Lacey, go, Lacey. <laughs> Whenever we caught one, we were so excited. It was just amazing. Um, not everyone caught one, so I'm happy to say I caught at least one. Yeah. Good job, Lace. Good Ready? job. Smile. 18 different ACC institutions from across the country, unified and eager to learn about the past in another culture. So they're learning in the classroom. They're learning on their practice field or competition or pool, but they're, they're learning in the community, but they're also learning in experiences like this. And we were all vulnerable with each other. We had a great time connecting with one another and being able to relate and give feedback and actually listen to one another. I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning a lot about my friends, my peers, and making new friends and learning a lot about them. So it's good. I feel like I'm really gaining a uh, new perspective on, on life. I think I learned a lot and I'll definitely, you know, take what I learned and bring it back to my team. And I think that's really what it's about as well. Just learning and sharing with others. The value is like you getting a different perspective, you kind of change your life and you choosing to come in with an open mind and forget everything that you know and that you think and try to change your mind and try to grow because that's how we grow in life. We get different experiences. The ACC Unity Tour is the perfect name because I feel like it unified us as a conference. I feel like it unified us as a pack and it was really cool to be able to interact and grow. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Carolina Ford Dealers. See your Carolina Ford dealer, proud sponsor of NC State Athletics. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. CPI. It's Truck Month at your Carolina Ford dealers. Get great offers on a large selection of Ford F-150 trucks with available smart tech like Ford Blue Cruise, the hands-free highway driver assist feature named Consumer Reports top rated active driving assistance system two years in a row. Tough this smart can only be found here during Ford Truck Month. Get up to $10,250 in total savings plus three years of Ford Blue Cruise on a 2024 Ford F-150 XLT hybrid. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Coca-Cola. Crisp, refreshing, and irresistibly tasty. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Try and decide. Hey, let's transition into hoops, let's right? That's what we call them, broadcasting, right? <laughs> you know, bouncing from one sure. segment to another. Sure. And uh, NC State men's basketball held its first preseason press conference about a week ago. And uh, I was shocked when I walked, they walked into the, the walked into the building. Here's why. Normally they have uh, Coach Keats portion of the press conference in what is known as the uh, team meeting room, which is the bottom floor. 
at the Dale Center. Mm -hmm. It's not a big room. I, I'm trying to think, maybe they have 15 or 20 seats in there. Yeah. Um, but you see you go into the press conferences uh, last year, there was plenty of room. You could easily find a seat. So you and I walked in and it is packed. Standing room only. Standing room only. I had to sit on the floor over in the corner. I've never seen it like that. And it just shows you what happens and uh, the perception of your program, how it changes, not only from fans, but the media after you win the ACC championship and you go to the final four. It was a different world. I couldn't believe it. It's great to see all you guys. And um, honestly, I miss you guys because you guys have been pretty doggone good, especially at the end of the year. And uh, I had a, a great summer, not a good summer. So anybody asks me how my summer was, it was a great summer. I got a chance to do a lot of good things. I had a chance to reflect on a lot of things. Um, I watched every game backwards, uh, the, the nine game um, elimination games that we won, uh, amazing. I wouldn't um, trade it for anything in the world. It was an unbelievable um, uh, run that our guys had and, it, and I'm proud of it. And, you know, I'm proud for everybody that, you know, it's um, part of uh, Wolfpack Nation, the former players, the current players, just the alumni. Uh, it was so great to run into a bunch of people this summer. And, you know, I, I, you know that you won a lot of games when you get a bunch of grown men that are crying and saying, you know, what a, a great um, tournament run. And, um, you know, we were excited, you know, ACC champions and, you know, those five days in D.C., were incredible. Nothing like winning. It's mm -hmm. such a soothing balm to all things. I, I've been nothing but impressed, you know, from, from the jump. I'm, I've met Coach Keats a couple times briefly. I've, I've been really in football land, honestly, and, mm -hmm. but I'm sure. I, I was at practice yesterday, and I think not only am I impressed by talent depth and all the obvious things that you look at, but practice structure, energy, the positivity and enthusiasm. The personnel is impressive. Again, but it goes back to that chemistry thing we were talking about with football, bringing in new guys. Now you got to find a way to uh, make it a cohesive unit. And again, usually it takes a while, like last year's basketball team. Didn't really happen until the ACC tournament. And right. then the chemistry kind of caught fire and it, it fed on itself. You know, Coach Keats took uh, the team out to a, a local restaurant. Uh, last week, and he distributed their ACC championship rings. And so when you win a championship and you go to the Final Four, the next season automatically starts with good vibes. Because the players, or the returning players anyway, <laughs> they get their championship rings. And think about that first game. Uh, never before at Lenovo Center now mm -hmm. has the Wolfpack been able to start the season by raising a couple of banners. You raise uh, the ACC championship banner, a Final Four banner. So the Lenovo Center not only will have a new name, it'll have two new banners in the ceiling, which is really a cool thing for NC State basketball. There's no better way to start a season. Yeah. You can go in PNC Arena, you got all the old banners hanging in there. You know, Southern Conference, a Dixie <laughs> Classic, 74, 83, you got David Thompson, 44, hanging up there. All the old school guys, and we love celebrating their success. But isn't it nice for a change to be able to celebrate current success? And uh, that's just going to be a, a really exciting night, opening night, when they're able to raise those banners. Yeah, bad. and you got returners on the team, too. You got O'Connell, you got Middlebrooks, you got Taylor. We'll, we'll break the roster down. But... Chaz, I'm Tony Haynes. Thanks for listening.